Hello everybody, this is Marius and I'm together with Nikos, our research fellow uh, from Basel. It's the beginning of April and we have a really interesting case of the week for you. So we had this uh, very interesting M1 from back to me the other day and I had a few questions about it. Like, why is it an interesting case? Did we do anything different this time? So, so let's start with, you know, the first series. And uh, of course, as you see this, it's, it's a standard M1 uh, occlusion, right? So nobody, I think, will think it's interesting. Uh, the actual interesting part came after the first maneuver, so this is our uh, intermediate series. Uh, and then you can see here, this is what we see after the first standard thrombectomy maneuver uh, by using our save technique. If you haven't uh, seen our save technique, uh, click on the description below uh, so you can watch all the tutorials about it. Uh, but again, this is what we saw after the first series, right? After the first pass. Could you just like do one overview of which vessel is which and so we can be a bit more oriented? Yes. So this is the M1 for me and then you have here the bifurcation. It's a bit of an early bifurcation. Uh, and what you actually see here is the stenosis of the M2, right? You have the superior trunk, the inferior trunk here, and this is probably a residual stenosis. Now the interesting question is now, is it a atheroma? Uh, and what we do in those cases is we sometimes wait a couple of minutes and we'll see what actually happens with this stenosis because uh, in some cases it's just, you know, a residual clot uh, and with TPA it can also resolve. So this is one interesting thing. The other interesting thing, if you check this lateral angiogram here, is actually that you see there is a, a distal um, occlusion now. Uh, it's a distal M2 uh, occlusion. Uh, and uh, I really like those, uh, you know, I call them the perfusion cards, right? Uh, let me unzoom for you. Uh, and then you will see here that, you know, you have a, a pretty big deficit still on the MCA territory. So I wouldn't leave it like this. Yeah, okay. So uh, what, what would be the plan? Which technique would you, would you use for this specific case? I mean, we just started with this trial called the Techno. So you could actually include this patient in the Techno trial. We checked all the criteria and actually we had an exclusion criteria here, so we couldn't um, include the patient in the trial. Uh, so for you that don't know about this, it's about a randomized trial uh, where on the intervention arm you give intra-arterial tenecteplates. It's run by Johannes Kesmacher in uh, Bern, and we are one of the participating centers. But here, again, we decided to go for a distal thrombectomy uh, with a small stand retriever uh, and our uh, so-called quattro technique. If you haven't heard about the quattro technique, click on the description below on our full tutorial about it. So what, what's that quattro technique? Could you just, like, how did you implement it here? Yeah, so we use four materials, four devices. That's why we call it the Quattro. Uh, it has nothing to do with, you know, Audi and, and German car makers. But uh, the idea is that you use your guide catheter, you use an uh, intermediate aspiration catheter, as you can see here in the M1. Then you use a small aspiration catheter, and that's the 3 max usually, which you place in the M2, and also a stent retriever, which is usually a 3 millimeter stent retriever. So here you have the guide catheter down on the ICA, you have your large aspiration catheter in the uh, distal uh, ICA. Uh, this is going to go all the way up to the M1 when we retrieve. And then you have your distal aspiration catheter and your stent retriever in the M2 there. Anything different on this distal case that we do not do normally? Do we do an extra series? Or? So again, we, we use our quattro technique, but we modified a little bit. So as you can see here on this series from the microcatheter, we have our 3 max here in the M2. And we then have this uh, long 167 microcatheter all the way to the M3. What I didn't like when I saw this angiogram is that actually this curve is really um, uh, closed 180 degrees, right? You get this idea that the clot is actually sitting here, right? Because so it's not really an M3 occlusion, it's a distal M2 occlusion. And that's why I decided to adapt my maneuver uh, and try to avoid, uh, as you can see here, uh, let me zoom a little bit for you. You can see I tried to avoid this whole curve with this energy retriever. I stayed in front of the curve, but I have my clot here somewhere, right? If you remember from the angiogram, uh, it was a distal M2. So then after having the clot um, captured there with a the standard retriever, I also pushed my small aspiration catheter all the way to the face of the clot and then captured it in this so-called sandwich or wedge position. Mm -hmm. 
so you avoided like getting around the curve without like placing your center river before the apex so we don't so you don't like yank and and straighten the vessels exactly and what we did when we then retrieved the whole thing was that we also put the uh, aspiration catheter here in the M1 so actually we retrieved the whole system stent retriever small aspiration catheter and clot towards the big uh, aspiration catheter which was not moved but we used aspiration zero so actually what we sometimes call it also or the first name of this quattro technique was save to solumbra so you actually pull back the unit standard retriever small aspiration catheter clot to a big aspiration catheter which you then don't remove and like how did it go at the end is the patient all right so it went really well. The patient was actually asymptomatic uh, at the end of the procedure. So she came with an NHS of over 10 uh, and uh, she couldn't move the, the left side of her body. Uh, and this was the result, you know, with the reperfusion cards after uh, the um, proximal uh, thrombectomy and also the distal thrombectomy with the smaller materials. You can see we have a full reperfusion of the whole territory. So if I show you the CT, actually, from this patient, you see that there wasn't any bleeding on this side of the brain when we worked. Uh, so altogether, a really good result. You know, sometimes don't stick to the, to the rules. You have to check the anatomy, to understand the anatomy, and, and try to adapt to the case. I mean, if you see in this case, it's a pretty interesting anatomy because you have an early kind of bifurcation. But then the inferior trunk, which usually is the bigger one, the dominant one, uh, is in this case smaller and you have a really big superior trunk. So you can barely see the inferior trunk here. This is a, a branch from the superior trunk actually, which goes all the way to the back of the post-central region. Uh, and then you have this occlusion of uh, exactly the branch that uh, feeds the central region. So for us, we wouldn't leave something like this. And you can also see here the frontal branch that uh, provides uh, blood to the frontal operculum on the, on the right side. Thank you for watching. Uh, and if you are already part of the distal trial, uh, think about uh, randomizing patients uh, and uh, providing the data uh, for future treatments. Uh, if you're not part of the distal trial but are interested in joining us, uh, feel free to text me or DM me and then we can uh, include you in the trial. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions you can always comment below.